The mother brought her nine-year-old girl with a big belly to the hospital to see a gynecologist. The doctor turned pale and couldn't believe his eyes. Enjoy watching. Please support us with a like and subscribe to our channel. There are many new stories ahead. Now, the young doctor explained to his patient, you only need peace and pleasant thoughts, complete rest for six months, and no beds, vegetable gardens, and backpacks with harvest. Do you understand that? The old lady shook her head quickly. Oleg sighed mentally. He knew she wouldn't obey. She would leave the clinic and immediately rush to plant her precious cucumbers. How many of these he had already seen? Margarita Mikhailovna. The doctor decided to try again. You have adult children. Do you have grandchildren? Let them help you at the cottage house. Still the same frequent nod in response. Do you want me to talk to your family and explain everything to them? No need, honey. You'd better prescribe me some pills. You don't need these pills. You need to rest. But the harvest will be lost. Never mind. Your son visited me yesterday and said, Oh, doctor, please convince her she shouldn't kill herself in the garden beds. I'll buy her potatoes, carrots, and beets. What else do you need? No, honey, that's not good. Groaning, Margarita Mikhailovna rose from her chair and trotted towards the door. I'll come and get some pills later. That stubbornness was the worst, but he could do nothing. It was always like that with senior people. It was impossible to persuade them. He felt sorry for them, but there was no way to explain they needed to obey the doctor. It was easier for them to come and get some pills later. When the door closed behind the patient, Oleg looked longingly at the nurse. Oh, Julia. She smiled. Why are you so upset? You've known Kovaliva for several years. Yeah, I know. And not only her. We have so many people like that. But I'm still upset. Honestly, such people sometimes make me want to quit. You try to break down all the nuances a hundred times over, and they... Why do they need their vegetable gardens? These 200 square meters don't bring food for even a year. And by the way, treatment is a two-way process. I treat them, they follow my prescriptions, but... Oleg Alexandrovich, do you know how old they are? They have garden addiction ingrained in their flesh and blood. You won't convince them that vegetables cost a penny and their children are happy to help them. They will make their children and grandchildren work like a dog, but they will never abandon their garden. It's all in vain. You're just getting on your nerves. She didn't finish. They heard a heart-rending scream coming from behind the door. You're lying, little devil. Better tell the truth or it will be worse. Oleg heard. The woman in the corridor was screaming so loudly that both people on the upper floors and downstairs in the reception area could probably hear her. And no one interferes? You small parasite. You're knee-high to a grasshopper. What were you thinking about? Tell the truth, brat. The truth. There were only sobs in response. Oleg silently waved to frighten Julia, opened the door, and entered the corridor. The screaming woman didn't pay any attention to him. She continued to shake the girl of about eight by the shoulders and shout in her face, Answer the truth! The truth! She already swung her hand to hit the child, but Oleg intercepted it. That's no place for family squabbles, he said. Which doctor are you registered with? The woman looked at the doctor in confusion. She was pretty. More precisely, she could have been like that if not for her messy hair, damaged with dye and vulgar makeup. If only she could wash her face and comb her hair, she would probably look better. Which doctor are you registered with? He repeated louder. And then she seemed to wake up. Which doctor? Well, anyone. You see, this brat is already pregnant. Let someone examine her. I'm not. The girl squeaked, but instantly fell silent under her mother's furious gaze. I'll take you to the pediatric gynecologist, the doctor said and took the girl's hand. What is your name? Mila. Okay, Mila. Do not be afraid of anything. We'll go to the doctor and give your mom something to calm her down. Let's go. I'll go with her. The woman jerked forward. Which office? Oleg turned to her. You will stay here. And if you try to create another scandal, you will have to wait for your daughter outside. Come to my office. The nurse will give you valerian. The child's palm in his hand became wet with fear. Don't worry about anything, he repeated. The doctor will ask you a few questions and then examine you. It doesn't hurt and I'll wait outside the door. Then we will return to your mom and I will talk to her. As Oleg brought the girl into the office, he managed to whisper to his colleague, Be careful, Nona Eduardovna. The girl is scared to death. Her mother is hysterical. 
Fifteen minutes later, Mila went out into the corridor. Nona Eduardovna followed her out with a conclusion. Oleg, she needs to be examined. Her reproductive system is okay. No deviations, no contacts, but the tummy is too big. Take her to specialists, and the sooner the better. Ultrasound, markers, markers and x-rays. And do it quickly. Do you want me to ask myself? Mila stood aside, not looking up at the doctors. She seemed to be used to living in the shadow. With such a mother, that was nothing surprising. I'll do it. Mila, come here. The girl immediately approached and took her eyes off the floor for the first time. She didn't look like her mother at all. She had big blue eyes and a thin nose, but she was very pale, either from fear or from something else. The doctor says your mother isn't right, he said. You are not? Well, that's not what she thinks, but your belly is a bit big, so you'll undergo additional examination. It's fast. She nodded and timidly extended her hand to him. Oleg squeezed her narrow palm. Poor baby. She would reach out to anyone who showed even the slightest interest in her. He led her along, for some reason feeling responsible for the girl. It was as if she was a foundling who he couldn't abandon. Half an hour later, Oleg returned to his office, holding the doctor's reports. He asked Mila to wait in the corridor. The girl's mother was sitting on a chair and nervously drumming on the table with the tips of her nails. When she saw Oleg, she stopped knocking, but her face remained tense. Well, she said abruptly, what's her term? Isn't it too late to have an abortion? There is no need for an abortion, he answered. Your daughter isn't pregnant. She has a small hernia. You can remove it with a simple surgery. You can do it under the obligatory medical insurance, but then you should wait in line. Or you can go to a private clinic and pay some money. However, it's not that expensive since the surgery is simple. I won't pay, the woman muttered. I know that trick. You deliberately come up with the diagnosis to make money, and then you will share it with your friends from the private clinic. Being rude, Oleg noted, is not necessary at all. If you want a free surgery, it will be free, but only six months later. I still recommend doing it now until... Sorry, I don't know your name. Larissa. So Larissa, I recommend performing surgery now. Who knows what can happen in six months or maybe a year. The girl is growing up and, please understand, this will also affect the price. The medicinal dose is calculated based on body weight. I won't pay for anything, she shouted. Do you think you don't get enough money here? You're not alone. Not everyone around you is a banker. I have no money. I'm unemployed and low income. And I'm not going to pay for anything. You won't force me. Where is Mila? Where did you take her? She's waiting outside the door. Oleg shrugged. Do you know I can report you to the guardianship authorities? Your child needs treatment, but you refuse to take care of it. The child, Larissa said, stuttering with anger, needs a belt, and I'll take care of it. And if you try to complain, then I'll... whatever. She rushed to the door, but the doctor blocked her path. Listen, he said quietly. Be responsible. We're talking about a child. Let me through. Why are you talking about something you don't know? I don't know about what. I know what is said here. He shook the reports before Larissa's eyes. And I will complain, as you put it. I swear I will. Don't even doubt it. But I'm afraid we'll lose precious time waiting for you to convince the guardianship authorities you're a perfect mother. Why did you give birth to that child? I didn't give birth to her, Larissa shouted. Her face turned red with anger. I got her by accident. I didn't ask for her. Okay? Okay. Oleg looked out into the corridor. Mila, wait a little longer, please. Your mom and I need to talk. After that, he locked the door and turned to Larissa. Tell me. What? Everything. Speak up now that you've started. Who are you to this girl? Where are her parents? Why are you so angry with the girl? She doesn't have parents, Larissa grumbled. Her mother was my sister. She got pregnant when she was dating some idiot, still a student. She didn't tell him anything about her pregnancy. Five years ago, she died. The bus got in an accident. And... What should I do with her child? My mother said she doesn't need children in her old age, but why do I need them? Well, Mila stayed with me. Honestly, I thought they would at least pay benefits for her. But those benefits? Are they enough to not have to work and support a child? Did you want not to work? The woman blew her bings out of her eyes and looked at the doctor defiantly. 
I did. I'm raising my sister's child. Am I not entitled to compensation for this? She lives in my house. She eats and drinks. She makes me nervous. Do I have to work hard both at work and at home with this girl who isn't even my daughter? I see. The benefits aren't enough for you to live an idle lifestyle. That's not the only thing. I met my love. We started living together. And she, that little monster, she has her eyes for my Grisha. She thinks he will choose her. Oleg stared at the woman in shock. Larisa, are you all right? How old is Mila? She is nine, she answered reluctantly. Do you understand what you are saying? She is a child, and you, an adult woman, are jealous. Do you think she wants to seduce your adult partner? He is not a partner, he is my love, Larisa shouted furiously. I may have been waiting for him all my life, and now I won't let anyone ruin my happiness. I'm happy for you, but that's not what this is about. This is about it. I can give birth to my children. And I will. Nothing will stop me. I will not let anyone separate me from my loved one. Do you know what love is? It doesn't matter. I want to know what Mila's role is. Is she bothering you? She's just waiting to steal my man. Come to your senses. Shame on you. Mila is a nine-year-old girl. You don't understand much. You don't know who she is. She's depraved like her mother. She got pregnant without a husband, and she... That's enough, the doctor interrupted her. It's disgusting to listen to. That's how you do. Mila will do the tests before surgery here. I will pay for the surgery and give you a referral. Oh, I don't believe you will bring her again. I will pick up the girl tomorrow at 7 in the morning. Then I'll bring her back. I will have the referrals with me. Now, leave. And God help you if I see at least one bruise on the child tomorrow. Remember that. Larissa jumped out of the office and grabbed Mila's hand. Let's go home. Your patron will arrive tomorrow. Let's go. Mila obediently increased her pace. She knew it was better not to argue with Aunt Larissa, especially if she was angry. And she was angry all the time. You're a real burden, she muttered, dragging the girl behind her. No joy from you, no money, only losses. If this doctor likes you so much, let him take you. I don't need you at all. Mila listened indifferently to her aunt's grumbling. At first, the cruel words hurt her to the point of tears, but then she got used to them. She learned to ignore them. Tomorrow you will wake up yourself, Larisa continued to mumble. I'm not going to get up that early for you. You set the alarm clock and then do whatever you want. Try not to oversleep. I won't open the door to that doctor. Your patron, look at him. He's threatening me with the guardianship authorities. I'll complain about him myself. I'll sue the scoundrel. She entered the apartment without stopping her angry speech. Go to bed, otherwise you won't wake up early. I'm hungry, Mila muttered. You shouldn't eat before the tests. Go to bed, and don't let me see you until tomorrow. Mila sighed and went into the room. There stood an old kid's sofa, fenced off with a screen. The sofa was once good. Aunt Larissa took it from her mom's apartment. Mila pulled out her phone from under the pillow. A young, beautiful woman in a bright dress was looking cheerfully at the girl from the screen. It was Mila's mother. Mila was afraid she would begin to forget her mother's face over time. She was glad she had some photos. The girl got the habit of scrolling through photos before going to bed and telling her mom about her day. I'll get tested tomorrow, she whispered. And then there will probably be a surgery. I heard Aunt Larissa arguing with Dr. Oleg. But mom, don't worry about me. Dr. Oleg said everything would be fine. I want to eat, but Aunt Larissa says I shouldn't. Mom, how are you? Do you feel good? I haven't dreamed of you for so long, mommy, but I miss you so much. Mila hesitated. Tears tickled her eyes. But she couldn't cry. Or the weezer, Aunt Larisa, would scold her again. The girl hid the phone under the pillow and turned on her side. Through her slumber, she heard muffled voices in the kitchen. Those were Aunt Larisa and Uncle Vitalik. The doctor was weird. He said he would pay for everything himself. And you're happy. Should I cry or what? Or do we have a lot of money? I did not say that. It's just... It's all strange. Why should he spend his money on Mila? Maybe he wants something in return. Rather than think about it, you'd better find a job. How long will you sit here? Not for long, but now there is no work for me. We have to wait a little more. By the time you find it, I'll be 50. When to get pregnant? Pregnant? Pregnant. That's all you're talking about. 
Mila didn't hear anymore. She fell asleep, and in her dream, everything was fine. There was her affectionate beautiful mother and a sunny day. Her mom was holding her hand, and they were drinking ice-cold fruit juice. And then, they ran to swim in the sea. How was it? Oleg rushed to the clinic immediately after work. Mila had surgery in the morning, and he called the doctors every hour. Larissa never called. She completely disappeared after Oleg forced her to sign consent for the surgery. The woman never called him or the clinic. Oleg thought Larissa was sick, or perhaps she needed urgent help. But when he came to her house, he was convinced everything was fine. Larissa was watching the movie with her lover. An open bottle of wine and a fruit bowl were on the table. What else do you need from me? The woman was displeased. Oleg shook his head. Nothing. He found out he was the only one interested in the life of little Mila. How was it? Everything is fine, Oleg. His former classmate smiled at him. They studied together but went to work in different places. His classmate got married early. And now he had to feed his wife on maternity leave and his two boys. Oleg was alone. No wife, no children. He could afford to work in a district clinic and remain faithful to his youthful ideals about a real altruistic doctor. Someday he would have a family. And then, he would have to think about making money. But until then, he wanted to help people with no strings attached. Someday, he would be pleased to remember that time. The girl is fine. She has already recovered from the anesthesia. We've transferred her from intensive care. Do you want to see her? Of course. Then let's go. Listen. What's happened? I didn't dare ask you. Who is this girl? My friend, does this answer suit you? Theoretically, yes, but practically, don't think I suspect you of anything. You don't? I'm pleased. Stop it. But you paid for her surgery. You treat her like she's your own. If I'm interfering where I shouldn't just say so. Oleg smiled. It's just that no one cares about her except me. Mila was waiting for him. Oleg understood that by the girl's joyful smile before he even entered. I'm fine, she said. He pulled a chair towards the bed. Doesn't it hurt? No, she shook her head. It doesn't hurt at all. I asked my mom to help me, and she helped, it's true. Tell me about her, Oleg asked. Does she look like your Aunt Larissa? Well, the girl thought, no, not really. They have similar hair and laugh the same. But my mom laughed more often, and Aunt Larissa laughs rarely. And my mom loved me, and Aunt Larissa, well no, she's good Aunt Larissa. But she's not my mom. I'll show you my mom now. She quickly took out her phone from under the pillow. Here's my mom. Oleg looked at the photo and froze. On the screen of an old mobile phone, he saw a photo of... Her name was Olga, he said. His voice was slightly hoarse. Olga? Olga, Mila nodded. She was 29. She worked as an economist. The girl looked at him in surprise. Did you know her? Oleg nodded. It was hard to speak. I knew. He answered in the same unrecognizable, hoarse voice. I knew Olga. He knew her. He remembered her. She was his first love and first despair. Olga. They were together for six months, and Oleg could hardly remember anything except the soft clod of her hair and the touch of her skin. Her lips were soft and always smelled of mint. And then, he didn't know what happened. They parted until the evening. And in the evening, Olga didn't come. Did she leave him? In any case, she changed her phone number. Oleg started looking for his girlfriend, and then he realized he didn't even know her last name. The guy almost went crazy with grief. He saw her in every girl passing by. He dreamed about her at night and didn't want to wake up. He stayed at home for a week. He couldn't walk outside. Wherever he looked, Olga was everywhere. But it wasn't her. He wandered around the city as if through a labyrinth, looking back at non-existent calls. It was quiet. Terrible madness. Then, Oleg locked himself at home and seemed to sleep for a week. And then, he felt better. Oleg went outside and was happy to distinguish faces again. He no longer saw Olga at every step. He went to the store, bought food, and ate with pleasure for the first time in a month. And then, he went to study. His friends were happy to see him, but didn't ask any questions. There was no need for them. He never met Olga again after the morning they parted nine and a half years ago. I have to go now, he told Mila. But I will come to you tomorrow. Do you want anything? What should I bring you? I have everything, the girl smiled. I don't need anything. You come yourself, that's all. He patted her hand awkwardly. Rest, my dear Mila. See you tomorrow. He went out into the street, feeling drunk. 
Olga left him nine and a half years ago. She had been pregnant for three months already. Didn't she know about it? That couldn't be. Three months is not a month or a month and a half. She probably knew. And she didn't tell him anything. However, there was no way to find out why. Why find out? Mila was what mattered. She was his daughter and lived with her aunt, who almost hated the girl. The guy didn't even think he might not be Mila's father. Olga loved him. They were inseparable. And he just knew. Mila was his daughter. And Larisa had to learn that. She listened to the news without any emotion. She was sitting in the kitchen, wrapping herself in a shabby robe, and endlessly, annoyingly stirring her tea. She even had no intention to drink it. She yawned and checked her hair. She didn't ask any questions or show any surprise either. Oleg even thought she was bored. When he finally finished speaking, Larissa didn't even look at him. She focused on another crucial matter. The woman scooped up the cool tea with a spoon and then poured it back into the mug. She did it multiple times. I am Mila's father, Oleg repeated. She is my daughter. Larissa answered him with an absent-minded sleepy look. Will you pay child support? She asked. It would be better if you give it voluntarily. Otherwise, there will be much trouble with the courts. Is she drunk or what? He sniffed quietly, but didn't smell any alcohol. You didn't understand me, Larissa, he said. I want to pick up my daughter. You don't care. As far as I understand, you don't have time to look after her. Mila will feel better with me. Maybe, Larissa yawned. She'll probably feel better with you, but I still need her too. Do you? Why? Well, they pay benefits for her. I've never worked, and I don't want to start. I live well without it. And your... loved one? Doesn't he support you? You said you were planning a child. You were planning? I keep planning and planning. Ugh. So Vitalik is not working now. Well, these are temporary difficulties. Your boyfriend will find a job. No, I don't think so. He loves freedom and will not sit in one place for long. But with Mila, there's still stability. At least some money. Oleg suddenly felt funny. She said that she only needed Mila for benefits. She didn't even try to pretend to be a loving aunt. What was that? Absolute honesty? Or was she just stupid? I will seek DNA testing, he said dryly. It is a simple procedure, and I will seek through the court to get the girl's custody. I won't pay child support, Larissa immediately perked up. Don't even think about it. I've been feeding her for so many years. I sacrificed my happiness because of her. What? Vitalik abandoned me, she said plaintively. Today, he said I hadn't called Mila even once. And since I treat her like that, I wouldn't be a good mother to his children. Her face was sad and lost. But Oleg didn't feel sorry for her. He felt some disgust, but there was no pity or compassion. Vitalik said the right thing. Oleg said briefly, He's not a fool. I'll meet you in court. He hurried to leave the apartment and get out on the street. It was as if the air in Larissa's home was choking him. She was so disgusting. He felt sick thinking that his daughter had lived there for several years. But it was over. She would never come back there again. He would do great. He had a cozy apartment. It was small, but they would buy a bigger one later. He would look for work in a private clinic. It was time to think about what to feed his family. Mila would have her room and a nanny. And he would work tirelessly so that his daughter did not need anything. He could do it. And on the other side of the city, in the hospital room, Mila was quietly talking to her mother. Mommy, she whispered, looking at the photo. Thank you for helping me. I'm feeling good. Mommy, is it possible? Is there any way to make Oleg become my dad?